What is the difference between Cajun and Creole? Sportsmanship and eating are Louisiana's top activities. Therefore, any mention of the state conjures expectations of food. This begs the question, what is the difference between Cajun and Creole? The easiest way to differentiate is Cajun is country food from those who settled in the swampland in the 1700s and depended heavily on locally grown vegetables and meats. Samples of Cajun food include boudins, spicy sausage andouille, and gumbo. Creole is city food descended from foreign colonists, American Indians, and Africans who had a more refined selection of foods and spices. The focus of this video is on Conrico, Conrad, Rice Mill, and New Iberia. Personally, I think food in Louisiana are synonymous. We always have a container of the amazing seasoning blend made by Tony Sacheries, and it is found in Opelousas. It's categorized as a Creole food. Tony Sacheries was the first inductee into the Louisiana Chef's Hall of Fame. He died a week later. Boy, what a shame. But that's not the focus of this video. The focus of this video is on Conrico, Conrad, Rice Mill, and New Iberia. Not far away from Opelousas, but south of Lafayette. This is the nation's oldest operating rice mill. It was founded in 1912. The corrugated metal facility with cypress floors is still in limited operation and open for tours. It was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1981. Begin a visit at the Conrico Company Store, a replica of an old plantation company store located adjacent to the mill. While visitors wait for a tour to begin, the friendly Cajun staff offers cups of flavorful South Louisiana-style coffee. For that matter, something is always cooking for visitors in the store, such as red beans and rice or jambalaya with rice. Let me tell you a little bit about our experience with Conrico Rice. It all started in May of 2023. We were traveling down I-10, heading back from a, a wedding, and it was like, let's pop over there. Let's hurry and get over there. You know what happened? We didn't get there before they closed. So you know what that means? A second attempt. And just a little over a month ago, our second attempt was fruitful, and we made the tour. You are greeted by friendly Cajun staff. And boy, did this girl have an accent, and she was sweet. Short, medium, long, brown. I thought that was funny. I made that up. Turned out, she said I was right. So she would put the bag and she pulled the lever. I said, okay, my question is, how do you know when to stop? She said, I don't know, it just stopped. They encourage you, after paying, of course, the nominal fee for the tour, to watch the video. And these pews, ah, oh, they were awful. They reminded me of the pews found in the churches in New England. And they showed this old video, and it was really funny. And one of the main things that I remember from it was they gave this wild story about how this man from Texas came over to the Lafayette area, and he thought he was going to get the best of these Cajuns. So he asked them if he could get change for an $18 bill. And you know, what their response was? It was brilliant. They asked him, did you want that in three sixes or two nines? That's a funny one, isn't it? All right, well, but back to the rice mill. I'm going to tell you a little bit about rice and which state is the biggest producer of rice in a little bit. So you'll want to hang on and watch that part. This is going to be a super informative video. Oh, but I've got to tell you this one really cool thing. Do you know what they do with the rice fields when they're flooded and the rice isn't growing? Do you know what grows in the fields during that time? Crawfish. Isn't that crazy? Well, you might as well make great use of the land. And those Louisiana people certainly are doing that because they are well known for their crawfish. You will find Conrico rice on the trails and byways of Bayou Teach. And it's only a few blocks away from a plantation home known as Shadows on the Teach. The day we were there, they had cooked wild pecan rice. And wait till I tell you why it's called wild pecan rice. Do you think it has pecans in it? You'll have to wait to hear. We walked on over after watching this film, which I'm not so sure the film was really that great, but they do have a better quality film that is running on a television inside the country store. If you go there, I kind of recommend that you go, you know what, let me just skip the film in the hard pew room and just watch this one on the TV in the country store. This is the mill. But picture this, back then they didn't have automobiles. So they would pull in with a, tra with a trailer pulled by a horse. They back that wagon up, then they dump it in that trunk over there which is gravity fed into the mill. Now, how do you dump the trailer? Well, if you look right here, we have chain balls. They would hook the front of the trailer, unhook the horses, lift it, dump it, and put it back down. They would weigh it before and after, and that was how the man got paid for his load. 
Time. I thought the place was shut down and had been shut down for decades, but apparently not. And they do run for special occasions. And if you're fortunate enough, when you take the tour, if they are operating, you get to be in there. So if you're passing through I-10 during normal business operating hours, you can pop in for a tour. As I mentioned, this rice mill has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. But you know what? That's sort of a problem because our tour guide said that they can't even replace a piece of wood on the porch without it being a piece of wood from that time period to keep this historic place designation. So it's really difficult to make repairs and find building materials that are in good enough shape that are from that time period. Okay, I think I might take this time to tell you a little bit about rice itself. What is your favorite rice? My favorite rice personally is basmati. Okay, for some rice statistics, 40% of the rice grown in the United States comes from, do you know? Can you guess? Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Eastern Arkansas. Arkansas is the largest rice producing state with over 1.156 million acres of rice planted on 1,877 farms in 2019. Rice production contributes over $1 billion to the state of Arkansas's economy. While driving in eastern Arkansas, see acre after acre of flooded rice fields flanked by soybean and cornfields. W.H. Fuller, John Morris, and Emma Morris are credited with founding the Arkansas rice industry at the beginning of the 20th century. Guess where 90% of rice is grown? It's not a really hard answer. Asia. But back to Louisiana. Okay, so back to the mill. Our tour guide explained a lot of information while we stood on the porch out of the drizzling cold rain. And then we entered. There were several informative signs, like this one on the milling process, and she went into great detail and explained how the all worked. The milling process. The first step in milling rice is to remove the outer hull. This is done on the second floor above the patty machine. If you come this way, you'll notice that we have concrete on, uh, we have metal plates on the floor. These are our dollars. This is what we roll stuff around in the mill. They weigh about 180 pounds empty. They're made of metal with metal wheels. So they are very heavy. We next remove the bran layers by causing the grains to rub against themselves. This process is called purling. The rice bran that is removed from the rice grains is sold for livestock feed. The final step in the milling process is to remove the grains that have been broken. These are removed in grating machines on the second floor. The brokens are sold to breweries, which use them to make beer. That's interesting, isn't it? After the milling process is finished, we pack our Conrico rice in sizes from 7 ounces to 100 pounds. This is done by our crew of expert patty rice pickers. I thought this was adorable. It was like a big dollhouse, but it's not a dollhouse. It is this mill. And as she opened the doors, we could see the process. And she explained each step. It was so interesting. Okay, wait a minute. Have you subscribed yet? If you have, thank you. And if you haven't, can you do that just like right now? Just hit that subscribe button. Thank you. And also, I want to encourage you. Have you watched my other videos from Louisiana yet? There's one on Tabasco. There's one on Louisiana's Old State Capitol, which is part of the architecture playlist. Then the tour guide, she was a little bit of a comedian because when we went over to this one machine and there was all this rice on the floor and I was like, this is so, this looks so dirty. She goes, well, where do you think they get dirty rice from? She was pulling my leg, but she had me for a few seconds there. That's not how you get dirty rice. It was a joke, people. Leave a comment below. Tell me what is your favorite rice and why. The green machine in front of you automatically form the rice bag. Fill it and seal it. The gray packing machine to the right with the sewing machine attached is semi-automatic. It drops the rice into a craft paper bag, trims the top of the bag, and sews it closed. These machines can pack from 7 to 25 pounds of rice. This is all so interesting. Of course, we know that this this isn't how it's really done any longer, but this is so much a part of American history and Louisiana history and Southern Louisiana history and Cajun and Creole culture. Then we walked over to the patty machine. That's where the dirty rice was underneath. This machine is designed to remove the brown rice from the patties. Those rice grains still in the hull. That's what a patty. You know you hear of rice patties? Our patty machine was built in Germany around 1927. Wow. That patty machine is almost 100 years old. Truly amazing. And another thing that was really interesting that our tour guide told us is that no one is allergic 
to rice. You keep it refrigerated because the bran needs to be stable. The bran on the rice is where most of the nutrients are. Rice is very nutritious and it is hypoallergenic. Nobody's allergic to it. Yeah, people are allergic to like gluten and they've got all the gluten intolerance and all that going on. No one is allergic to rice. I don't know. That's what she said. I haven't verified it, but it might be something interesting that you can check out. Do you know anybody that's allergic to rice? I don't. Before we left, we picked up a box of the Wild Pecan Aromatic brand brown rice. Do you know what it has to do with pecan? Absolutely nothing. But when we did cook it up, it was fantastic. I was totally shocked. I was just expecting some plain rice, but it truly was great. So if you see a box of wild pecan rice from Conrico in your local store, grab it. Help support this old mill. Conrico has started doing a lot of seasonings. We also purchased this Greek seasoning and a hot and spicy jalapeno seasoning. And we put it on everything. I put Tony Sacheries on almost everything. And of course, remember, I told you we went to Tabasco. Of course, we got this big bottle of Tabasco sauce. It's Louisiana. It's all about food. Have you told a friend about my channel? I hope you will. The second edition of Off and On the Beaten Path, the Unclassic Road Trip Central Edition, will be available in two weeks. I am so excited. There are 75 more pages of information about the Rocky Mountain states, the Great Plains states, and the Southwestern states. I will be giving you more information in all the upcoming videos on how you can get your fresh off the press copy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and a little bit of explanation in learning about rice and its importance. Ugly shoes on the ground. Unclassic road trip. All this talk about food. And guess what? I'm going to send you to the video. It's called French Quarter 101, which you see our visit to the French Quarter. It was a total blast. You will want to watch that video. Here's the link right here.